Stocks continued to sell off this week when we had a variety of different news events that came out that were pretty much negative for the overall stock market. On Tuesday, China cut interest rates in a surprise to analysts. China is suffering from an incredible stock market sell-off, and its economy is weak. So in order to spur banks to loan out money, it cut its interest rates. To make matters worse, this isn't really doing anything to stem the sell-off, and China might have to step in and do more in the future. Also on Tuesday, the U.S. retail sales came came in stronger than expected, with a 0.7% rating instead of the 0.4% that was expected. Although this does indicate that the U.S. consumer is strong and that the economy is strong, we're in a situation where good news is bad news. With the economy being that strong, the Fed may have to come out and hike interest rates even more than they anticipated. On Wednesday, we got the minutes from last month's Fed meeting. And the FOMC seems to be wanting to do more rate hikes. And at the very least, they are definitely dead set on keeping interest rates higher for longer. And this isn't good for stock market news either. As I mentioned last week, the big retail companies came out and reported this week, and it was a really mixed bag. On Tuesday, Home Depot beat on earnings, but gave a weaker guidance than was expected, and also said that consumers were pulling back on big-ticket item purchases. On Wednesday, Target beat on adjusted earnings, but it missed on revenue and gave weaker forecasts going forward. Also on Wednesday, TJX Companies, the company behind TJ Maxx and other discount retailers, announced a really good quarter. It beat on both the bottom line and the top line and gave really good forward guidance. However, since TJX is a discount retailer. This could just indicate that the consumer is trading down, which may or may not be a good sign going forward. On Thursday, Walmart reported an excellent quarter. It beat on the top and the bottom line, and it raised full-year guidance. But despite this excellent beat and good guidance going forward, Walmart actually sold off going into the end of the week, which could indicate that investors are starting to pull back from some of those names. As a result of the mostly bearish news catalysts that we got throughout the week, the the stock market sold off once more, with the S&P 500 finishing the week down more than 2%, even after selling off last week. As we look forward to next week, the Federal Reserve is back on the docket with Jerome Powell speaking from the Jackson Hole, Wyoming retreat that the Fed will be at. Of course, he's going to say higher for longer when it comes to interest rates, but since we're getting mixed messages from China, the global economy, as well as our own economy, it's hard to know whether or not he'll be able to tell us for sure whether they're going to pause in the September meeting or raise interest rates again. Over in Bitcoin, like I said a few weeks ago, if we saw even a modest stock market sell-off with Bitcoin already exhibiting weak price action, we could see a more significant sell-off, and that's exactly what happened this week. As you can see, price action really broke down on Thursday on the back of Elon Musk's SpaceX company selling all of its Bitcoin into the market. It was later announced that SpaceX wanted to take all of the Bitcoin off of their balance sheet and make it so that they would liquidate their assets. As a result, this created an epic sell-off, where Bitcoin sold from its high to its low of the week more than 15%. You can also see that our bearish parallel channels are locking in just like we'd want them to. Bitcoin ended up stopping almost right to the penny at the midsection of one of our bearish parallel channels. The bulls argue that since SpaceX is done selling its Bitcoin, that we won't be seeing additional weakness. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. Bitcoin has very few fundamentals, so when you see technical damage of this nature, there are now a lot of things keeping Bitcoin's price down. When we zoom out on the chart, you can see that the next level of support is down here at the $24,750 mark. But you can see also that Bitcoin just shot through every level of support that we'd established since then. And now that support will turn into resistance if Bitcoin rallies from here. On the bullish side, there is a lot of price action here in the past, and there might be support. Bitcoin may once again find a bottom here just like it did back in June. However, like I've been saying in the last couple of weeks' videos, there's just nothing positive on the macroeconomic scale right now that would indicate Bitcoin could rally from here. And even though bulls will tell you that Bitcoin is digital gold, you have to remember that even gold sells off during a market crash. Whenever the stock market crashes, people sell what they can, not what they want to or what they should. Therefore, if we see a big stock market sell-off, like many are predicting, 
Bitcoin will continue to sell off from here. And like I said in the last couple of weeks, since it's already weak, it is very likely that it could break through to even new lower lows. Over in my investments in Play portfolio, this week's biggest winner was Canopy Growth. Now, I know I said a few weeks ago that Canopy wasn't the winner since it's a penny stock and bounce. This week, it actually had fundamental news that led to its rally. Canopy Growth ended up selling one of its big campuses in North Carolina. And when you're talking about a company that has an asset light model and desperately needs money, this was a good influence of cash that might keep Canopy around for a little bit longer. As a result, Canopy rallied 11.99%, which is a pretty significant pop when you consider how downtrodden the rest of the portfolio and the entire market was this week. This week's biggest loser was Tesla, which dropped 11.22% on the back of news that they would be once again cutting prices in China to compete against the other EV manufacturers there. With China experiencing a weak economy right now, consumers aren't interested in purchasing expensive EVs. And Tesla wants to own the market, so it had to cut its prices on those models. As a result, that means less profits, and for the short term, investors started to bail on the stock. Over in the speculation and play portfolio, naturally my two biggest winners this week were my shorts on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. But I'm more interested in looking at an individual stock that outperforms in a down market. This week, that stock was Pinterest, which rallied 2.64% on the back of good analyst reports saying that their advertising model was starting to bear fruit. Additionally, there are rumors swirling that large companies are looking at either partnering with Pinterest or even acquiring it altogether. So Pinterest rallied this week 2.64% and was the biggest winner in this portfolio. This week's biggest loser was Virgin Galactic, which crashed 11.73% this week. Now, there wasn't any real news catalyst that drove Virgin Galactic down, and it is commercially viable at this point. But when you're talking about a market that's starting to sell off, the more speculative stocks get hit even harder. Virgin Galactic actually broke through its previous all-time low to make a new all-time low. So it's hard to know how much longer this one can stick around, particularly if an accident happens and it ends up going bankrupt completely. That being said, if Virgin Galactic can keep it up and make its model work, then it has has the possibility to be a profitable company in the future and will survive, but it is still one of the most speculative ones out there and was this week's biggest loser. Microsoft and the rest of the high-flying AI stocks continued to sell off this week. As I mentioned last week, I thought it was possible that Microsoft could trigger my next buy order very shortly, and it ended up doing so when the markets really started to sell off on Friday. My next buy order was filled at $312.85, where I added an additional 2.5% to this position. As I said last week, I'm still only slowly replacing all the shares that I sold much higher than here. So I continue to play with the house's money, only putting profits in at this time. The buy locked in a discount of 9.77% from shares that I sold back on June 15th at $346.72. It also raised my per share cost up 14.66%, up to negative $53.66. However, like I've said before, a negative per share cost in my portfolio means that I've taken all the original capital out of the position in addition to profits. In this case, $53.60 per share that's added to the portfolio's bottom line. From here, I I do have additional price targets pretty close to where we are right now, with my next buy target at $284.89, a pass point of support Microsoft has tested many times in the recent years. And again, since I am playing with the house's money, I have no capital in this position. I have no sell targets at this point. This is a long-term holding for me, and I'm just looking at replacing the shares that I sold back on June 15th. If you want to follow along in all the moves of all my portfolios and what I'm doing in Bitcoin, you can do so 100% for free at my website, www.geturk.com. Please hit like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I'll see you in the next video.